I want to welcome you to another one of our home videos. We'll be showing about 130 different stones from the tomb of Alexander the Great. It's a lot easier to uh, videotape photographs of these stones rather than the actual stone itself, so that's what I've done. I'm going to start off by showing many lions and birds, different animals. These pictures were taken in um, 1994 and in 1995 and the soundtrack is being dubbed in in 1996. This peculiar black type of stone is called Lavagna. It comes from a pit in Italy. There are several different uh, color variations of this stone. Uh, this uh, volcano in Italy where the majority of it comes from spewed out silt and so forth out of its uh, uh, mouth and into a lake where the sediments were cooled and this is what gives you the uh, the abundance of pyrite flakes of uh, fossils that are embedded into the actual Lavagna stone some of the variations of this Lavagna are harder in density here we see a whale we'll see the other side of this stone later there are several whales depicted in the tomb, horses, buffalo, you name it. There are many artifacts that we cannot identify. This appears to be some type of seal. You see the little fin down there at the bottom. And he has a very beautiful face. It's a very small stone and the face just has a, an unusual character to it. <clears throat> There's a cobra which appears to be smiling but uh, people of the ancient world also just thought that the uh, cobra had a smile painted across his face through his mouth. Here's the rear of him. We don't know what this is. It could be a prehistoric animal. It could be some type of razorback. The tail appears to be curled up. This is a hound, a dog. It's got an inscription on the back of it that I'm going to read. Looks like a female. See the rib cage. And on the back here it says, Very intelligent and best to be master of. People in the ancient day really appreciated their dog. Get into some ceremonial artifacts, for lack of a better word. This guy is absolutely beautiful. We believe this is a, probably about 4,000 uh, years plus old. It's carved out of marble. Extremely archaic. This javelin tip here, ceremonial, is, is pure white. It's a pearl white looking color that reflects. Here's a polished uh, Lavagna stone that reflects light quite beautifully. The uh, Lavagna stone is not hard enough to chop anything or hit anything. It's quite brittle. You can see the colors bouncing off of this, uh, this head here. Lots of full groove, double groove. much larger axe head here. This appears to be a button, a gorget, or something. We don't know. It could be a simple toy or a clip to hold a rope in place. I've seen literally hundreds of tips, javelin tips, arrow tips, from this tomb carved out of virtually everything from Lavagna to glass to sandstone, marble. Many of them have script on them such as this one. You'll see the double circle cross. This is a beautiful double tip. Polished, highly polished. And the uh, colors you see 
bouncing off of it here or exactly as you're looking at it. The, the camera did a good job of picking that up. Strange and abstract because we're not sure what some of these are. But this is um, a coin printed in, um, minted in Gadiz. It says Yuba Gaditsa. And it's got uh, Yuba's elephant trademark to it. Going to picture a couple of other coins. This is on one side of the coin. You'll notice it says uh, Helios. This is the flip of the same coin. It says Tainet. The Mother God. Mother Earth God. And here's another coin. All of these are plugs. They're just uh, uh, facsimiles. They're not real gold. They're painted. Another small tana. This is a Lavanya carved round. It's about the size of a small egg. And it appears to be some type of squid or an octopi. Not sure. Not sure what this is. Could be a sun gate, sun, morning horizon. This is a piece of Lavanya that's got script on both sides. It's in the shape of a boat, or like that of the sole of a shoe. And down the center of it, it has pyrite, uh, rows of pyrite flecks. Absolutely beautiful. appears to be a message baton. It could have been tainted. It's not quite as well executed as the others. The cartouche on this piece is, uh, has been damaged, but it sure was in good shape at one time. It's beautiful stone, beautiful rock. <clears throat> this is another stone that has what a lot of people like to call ogum, but it is not ogum. It's a numbering system. This is an alien in uh, linen. We have several different uh, pictures of aliens and linen, and they will all be uh, featured in the UFO video where I'm going to show about 20 stones from the Burroughs Cave, Lost Tomb of Alexander the Great. And we'll have the decipherment of this stone right here you're looking at. This is a female in an um, atmospheric type spacesuit with a bunch of inscriptions on it. That will be deciphered along with several other alien scripts alien related scripts Serapis holding the Ankh in the right hand and the staff in the left and you'll see the Helios in the upper left corner underneath the Sun the goat man staff in the right hand his cup of uh, the everlasting elixir in the left and this is his concoction to give to the mortals so that they will have everlasting life. <clears throat> well executed stone. This script is uh, going to be featured in one of our upcoming videos. This guy has script in his mouth that has not been deciphered. Many comical characters resembling those found in uh, South America. This is the reverse of that um, whale that you saw previously.
This is by no means all of the archaic heads that we've seen. This could be an Olmec or an African. But these are just the photographs that I have taken myself. This guy had yellow paint all over him. I guess someone thought it, the black was unacceptable, so they painted him yellow. This guy here is a, a brown type of stone. He appears to be weeping. And uh, I have seen other artifacts found in Indiana, carved out of the same stone, with the hands the same, the head the same, and they're also weeping. I don't know how to describe this guy. He's weird. Maybe that's the missing link. This is a cone head. We call him cone head. He looks very mean, very angry. He's mad about something. This is Hey Luigi. We don't know who he is. He's got a strange eye carved on the other side. There it is. Could be a comical uh, kid's toy of some sort. Something to have. See, there's several comical figures. This is a small Egyptian head. Appears to be uh, somewhere around the Ptolemaic era from Egypt. In most cases, where there's a front and a rear to the photograph, they'll both be pictured together at some point. This is another ugly head. Ugly, but I bet he's a nice guy. This is quite a comical character. Extremely uh, vivid facial expression. The camera doesn't pick him up quite as well as I'd like because the stone is so light colored. But he's got the strangest expression on his face. This is another Lavagna. This is Elus, the uh, king of the wind. People call this a wind stone. I was later to find out. You see the other side of it here. There it is. King of the wind. There wasn't enough space to put the E on. This resembles one of our friends. This appears to be a female, but we're not even sure about that. This could be a Numidian or something similar, we don't know. Has thin lips with a wide nose, slanted forehead. This stone is quite faded, but it has a perfectly executed nose and eye. This is a famous stone pictured in many uh, books and journals written about uh, this tomb. It's been around a long time. This stone has also been featured in many books. Clearly the Egyptian Uraeus. Here's another Egyptian uh, with the, uh, the double serpent. This could be a king. So could this. This appears to be another Egyptian priest of some sort. Several feature them in other videos. This this is a priest holding the Ankh in the left hand and the scepter in the right hand, which is a little bit backwards from the Egyptian. But if one studies the, the their Egyptian history, they'll notice that the scepter was hold, held in either the right or the left, and the uh, whip was held in the left. This is the most beautiful woman that's come out of the tomb that we know of. It's carved on a black rock. 
but she's just absolutely gorgeous, well executed. This is some type of priest, I think. This is another warrior. This is a Grecian helmet here. Very clean shaven Caucasian. Could this be a companion? Or Alexander. This appears to be uh, another uh, African of some sort. She knows it does not have wide lips. This is the famous bust of Yola Hysar, Julius Caesar. It's been featured in several books. It's beautiful white marble. And uh, this stone is for sale. We own this stone, and it is for sale. It's 2,000, oh, 2000 years plus bust of Julius Caesar. We don't know what this guy is. It's got a couple, got some script on the rear of it that hasn't been deciphered yet. Could be a guard at the port. A viola high song. This is Baz Achilles Vipero, King Achilles the Viper. Well executed stone. This is the rear of it. It says black like stone. We don't really know what the meaning of that is. The decipherment of this tablet is on the Isaac excerpt video. Uh, this is Quintus Cacilius Metellus Numidicus. You can read about him in Sallust. He was a very popular general in the Ugertine Wars. He was Council of Rome in 109 BC. The script here says Captor and Subjugator. Or you could say Besieger and Conqueror. Very famous general. <clears throat> several of these have been deciphered, several of them have not. We don't know what this is. It could be a mathematical layout, it could be a star chart of some sort, or directions on how to build something. The reverse of it here appears to be uh, something like the hull of a boat or dimensions but we're not sure like to hear some feedback on it if possible there's another small boat showing a sun and Tanith with a strange object in the, uh, in the in the sky there at the center this tablet says territories of King Helios and it's probably a year and date This stone will be deciphered later. Ah, this is a stone read, for, read in retrograde. Kornakut, which is a word meaning proclaiming the contents of the treasury. So it's probably uh, keeping track of money or items there, goods. There you can see Helios some script on the other side see the high star symbol showing the front and rear there same stone the decipherment of this stone is also on the um, the Isaac video this is showing the glyph on the uh, on the side of it and here you see both the uh, side and the front together this is the Belena tablet the whale Belena is the, at the bottom and smiling the decipherment of this stone in its entirety is on the Isaac video and also Tomb Tape 4. And this is showing the reverse of the same rock. 
See the Roman boat with a battering ram? This is the Baetis River Stone. It is also featured on Tomb Tape 3 and Tomb Tape 4. In its entirety, well executed stone. This is the uh, map of the Baetis River showing all the little towns and villages along the banks. This inscription is carved on a whale bone and this uh, decipherment will be featured on the Latin Etruscan video coming. This is the back of the uh, same stone. This is a very, very interesting and most significant inscription. This is a rock that says, Elus rises from the ground and goes up to heaven and pushes the moon across the sky. It's written in a, uh, it features glyph characters, Greek characters, and the name of the god, if you'll notice there, it was written in uh, archaic Latin letters. This stone hasn't been deciphered. There's been other, a lot of speculation concerning this stone. It's been featured in several articles. There's been speeches given about it, but I don't mind. Luca, this is the famous Luca tablet, the elephant still. It says basically the Punic elephant is abundant where it is humid. All of these uh, tablets and stones in this particular section have to deal with Alexander Helios. In some way or another, this is a little three-dimensional mummy, Egyptian mummy card that has Helios on it. This is Helios at age 22. That's what the inscription reads. See the sun, the three bulbs coming out of his helmet. Uh, the, this is a, um, uh, we believe this is Helios wearing a, a Greek helmet because the decipherment of this stone is on uh, tomb tape 4. It's written in demotic. It's quite interesting. This says uh, basically Helios is the sun. A little comical character there for the Helios. It's carved by different people. Even though all of these that you're seeing are of the same guy, different people carve at different times and have different things to go by as well. Some of them have the actual person, some of them don't. Same way it is today. This is Helios Rex. Helios the King. This is the famous Happy Lion. You'll notice in his mouth, we didn't notice, I didn't notice until I actually saw the, uh, the stone. In his mouth it says Helios King. And there's the sun and Helios written on the back of him. The, this uh, stone is explained in Tomb Tape 3, as a matter of fact. Ah, there's Helios as uh, a young man. This is one of the first stones that was uh, deciphered, the inscription on the rear of it. was extremely important in determining the uh, contents of the tomb and how it got here. This is the, uh, the the gentleman that brought everything over here, the ancient Ptolemaic tomb, over to North America. This is a missing son of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. His name is Alexander Helios, the son. And he's missing in history after about age 8 or 10 or so. Next we're going to look at this message baton, which was a very common mode of uh, exchanging information in the ancient world. You have a uh, a piece of marble that's carved with the letters backwards in reverse order and when you roll out the um, the uh, baton onto clay you get the impression and you read the impression this is the sun on the top of it and this is the date on the bottom of it this was a way to exchange secret messages or good tidings whatever military maneuvers. This is a greeting 
from Helios to someone. It's going to be uh, uh, the decipherment of this tablet. It's going to be featured in one of our upcoming videos. Basically, just make, mix up some clay and water and uh, roll the stone out into it. As you see here, this is a piece of, of kill fired ceramic where the stone was rolled and it made an impression and it was rubbed in gold so that we could see it. We're just going to scroll across the top and then across the bottom. And this is the bottom. quite an intricate stone. Showing the date right there. Impression of the date, the bottom of it. There's Helios written in reverse. I believe this is the last photograph, and I uh, hope that you've enjoyed this video. We hope to have more soon. Thank you for your attention.